its weight in gold. Today, the island dedicates about 20,000 hectares of land to tea production and maintains an annual output of about 19,000 metric tons. It's a steady supply, aided by the implementation of modern technology. A visit to a typical Taiwanese tea factory still evokes an old world charm. Scratch beneath the surface and one finds a complex interplay of modern processing and fermentation techniques in determining quality. Years of expert training and experimentation have allowed the Taiwanese to become world leaders in the craft of tea refining. Despite its fledgling history, tea growing was a practice they quickly adopted to the point of perfection. They took to it with a spiritual vigor and an economic common sense. Tea as a commodity was to have a profound impact on the country's economic development. Historical records state that the earliest tea bushes in Taiwan were transplanted in the late 18th century from China's Fujian province. Within half a century, tea began to establish itself as a significant cash crop. But it was the mid-1800s that witnessed a real boom in the tea trade. Taiwan had recently opened its doors and shipping ports to foreign trade and investment. British merchants soon arrived with plans to export Taiwanese tea to the West. They even encouraged local farmers to grow tea by providing loans. And then in 1869, a British merchant shipped high-grade northern Taiwan tea to New York under the label Formosa Tea. It not only fetched a high price, but quickly established Taiwanese oolong as a premium blend. Taiwanese tea was on its way to becoming an international brand. In its heyday, tea was the backbone of the Taiwanese economy, contributing up to half of total exports. But this was not to last. The 1970s saw tea export prices plummet. To help the tea trade survive, the government launched a public campaign to increase domestic consumption. The campaign proved successful, not only rejuvenating the people's love affair with tea, but kick-starting a new boom in the tea business. As a result of growing demand, specialist tea houses began to spring up around the island. By the early 90s, these stylishly designed spaces were a common sight in Taiwan and were to bring tea appreciation to a new level. Tai 
Besides providing a haven for tea drinkers, tea houses played an active role in preserving Chinese tea culture through tea appreciation classes. 不同的茶用不同的茶具泡出来的滋味是不一样的。嗯，用盖杯泡，用紫砂壶泡，中年壶泡，玻璃壶泡，滋味不一样。在香气、嗅觉的享受上面，味觉的享受上面，视觉的享受上面，看到的、喝到的、闻到的都不同。Here. Customers learn about the various blends of tea, proper brewing techniques, and knowledge of teaware. And by studying the intricacies of the traditional tea ceremony, students are in fact preserving a tea culture that was a daily routine in China for over a millennium. The tea house also served to foster an appreciation of the ancient Chinese tea arts. Practiced for centuries in China, the tea arts elevated tea drinking to a highly cultured status by combining it with other art forms. Tranquility. Aesthetics and achieving a reflective state of mind are the objectives behind this practice. Chinese folk music, for instance, has long been combined with tea ceremonies to great effect. And one instrument commonly associated with tea appreciation is the zither, a popular instrument in traditional Chinese music since ancient times. Drinking 